Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday here at Bible Tract Echoes. That title, Tract and Truth, is what we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast. We have been in our study on our regular time together, walking through the book of Second Peter, but it's Tuesday, and our Tuesday broadcast, we try to help focus our attention, focus our skills onto how do we tell more lost people the gospel of Jesus Christ, how do we help ourselves move the gospel forward in our local area as well as around the world. Hoping to sharpen one another's skills is really our goal here today, as it is on every Tuesday, because it's Tract and Truth Tuesday. Well, I've got a gospel tract here in my hand. It's an evangelism tool, and that's where the term track comes from. The other part of our title, the word truth, deals with gospel truth and the truth surrounding how to be more proficient at giving out the gospel orally and through gospel tracts. And to that end, today my Bible is open to the book of Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs 29. I've got a verse here. If you've never highlighted it or underlined it in your Bible, I would strongly encourage you to do that. It says a very powerful truth. I'm going to talk about Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 today, as it relates to telling the gospel, I'm going to talk about a gospel tract here. But first of all, let me tell you a little story. You see, on Wednesday evenings at the local church where I belong, I teach the teenagers. And last week in a room that's only 12 by 12, there were 17 teenagers in front of me. That means there were 18 people in a room that was 144 square feet in size. That's it. To say the least, it was crowded in there. Well, a couple of weeks ago, one of the teen girls that's part of the group, a 10th grader, came to me and asked me to pray for her. She's a homeschool young lady, and she was going to attend the public high school to take a driver's education course. And she expressed how fearful she was. She was fearful at two levels. Number one, She was fearful of being accepted by the other students. Now, you need to know she's a rather cute girl, and I already knew that because she was cute, the guys in the class would like her being there. She's going to be accepted by them right away. But the other level was this. She was fearful about actually getting into that hunk of metal called a car and driving it down the road. She was fearful of being the driver of the car. Well, she shared her fears with me. And my immediate response to her was this. I said, here's what you do. Forget about going to the course. Don't get a driver's license. Just stay home and depend on somebody else to drive you around. Don't even try to get a driver's license. Well, when I said that, you should have seen her face. She looked at me like I was somewhat crazy, and she blurted out rather loudly, but Mr. Mark, she said, I want to be able to drive a car. Well, all right, I said, then let's talk about facing our fears like a child of God. Do you have any idea why I told you that story? Well, friend, many believers are afraid of witnessing. So what do they do? They never witness. If people approach drivers training like we do telling the gospel, then nobody would ever get a driver's license. But everybody does get past that fear, don't they? And they get their driver's license. Believers need to have a way to get past their witnessing fears and get to the task of sharing the gospel. That's part of our goal today. Get your Bible, Proverbs 29. Join me there, please. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago, and it is an evangelism tool. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now is entitled Born Again. Born Again. I give this one out a lot, and here's why. Almost everybody I meet has heard the term born again. 
if for no other reason than they saw it on a sign at the end zone in a football game. But they're clueless of what it means, or they think they know what it means, and every person I've talked to who's never been to church, never been to a Bible-preaching church at least, has a skewed idea. More often than not, people think to be born again means you got to turn over a new leaf on how you act. Well, Jesus said, unless you're born again, you can't go to heaven. But the answer about how to be born again is not turning over a leaf, it's to have a heavenly birth. You've had a physical birth, but you need a heavenly birth. This gospel tract tells what the new birth really is and how to be born again. It's a really clear, simple, easy to read gospel tract. Please let me send it to you. It's part of a sample packet that we will send free of charge if you'll give us your name and address. My announcer will give that information at the end of the program. You can, though, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, Proverbs 29, verse 25, simply says this, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Being afraid of things. Being afraid of people is as old as the book of Genesis. Abraham was afraid of people, so he introduced his wife as his sister. Aaron was afraid of the people while Moses was up on the mount getting the Ten Commandments, so he participated in making that golden calf. Jesus, in Matthew 10, talked to his disciples about fear. He was leading them in what amounts to a gospel preacher's seminar, but before sending them out two by two, he gave them a course on serving, part of which dealt with fear. Jesus told them not to fear those who can only kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul. Nicodemus in John 3, the born-again passage, he came to Jesus by night because he was afraid. And in John 19, Pilate, he wanted to release Jesus, but he didn't. Why? He feared the Jews. So people having fear is no new thing. Proverbs 29, 25 is a simple verse. But it says three basic things. It says that there can be anxiety or fear about what people think and so on. This anxiety can become an anchor, a trap. And then the verse says, but there's an answer. There's a safe place to go to. So I've got three words today, anxiety, anchor, and answer. I'm going to take them one at a time. First of all, the anxiety. Verse 25 talks about the fear of man. Now, being afraid of what other people may think, say, or do is a real human emotion. We all know that. We've all felt it at some time or another. Well, this anxiety can stop us from doing things or saying things or going places that we really want to do. Learning to value the prize that comes from getting past the fear is a major step in overcoming the fear. Well, that teenage girl, she prizes her driver's license, so she got over her fear and went to the class. That's the word anxiety. But then my word is anchor. In verse 25, it talks about a trap or a snare. It's the word that would have been used in that day to snare a bird or snare a fish. Fearfulness of what people may think or say will trap us just like a bird gets trapped. The bird is held captive and most likely ends up on somebody's dinner plate. Well, being afraid to give out a track or being afraid to verbally tell the gospel will hold us back. It will be an anchor so that we don't grow in Christ. Every believer I know has a hankering in their soul to grow. Fear of man will anchor us back from the growth that we need to see that God wants to develop in us. All right, I've talked about the anxiety. I've talked about the anchor of the trap from anxiety, but now the answer. The second half of verse 25 gives us the answer, the antidote to fearing people's reaction to us when we tell them the gospel. Now, rather than focusing on people and pondering and mulling over what they might do, we are now to focus on God, who he is, and what he can do and what he will do. The verse in the second half of verse 25 says, But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. 
Oh, friend, that word safe was used of being in a high place above the danger that was making you afraid. Trusting in God puts us in a safe place. It does so for two reasons. There's two reasons why we're safe. Number one, to trust God puts our minds in a safe place. It is safer to think on Christ and his work and his power than it is to think on people and what they may think, say, or do. You and I have been charged to think on things that are true, just, lovely, wholesome, and so on, based upon Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. What better thing to fill our minds with is the person of Christ in order that we might have a safety in who he is. But then secondly, we're put in a safe place because trusting God puts us in a high place. The Hebrew word here for safe implies a high or a raised place. Let me ask you, have you ever stood on the top of a high mountain? Well, if you have, then you know exactly how that being there affects your perspective on all that is around you. Your location affects how you see the rest of the valley and other mountains and so on. Well, when you and I trust in God, that puts us in a new perspective about the people that are before us and their great need to get the gospel because they're on their way to a crisis eternity in hell. Going back to that story about the teenage girl and the youth group, she did go to her driving class, and lo and behold, in the class, there are 17 kids, only two of them are girls, and trust me, she was well accepted. So that fear is gone, and I talked to her here this week, and she has been in the car, and the fear of actually driving this hunk of metal out on the road is going away. The prize of her having a driver's license is now a lot closer in her mind's vision than it ever has been before. By the same token, my friend, when you and I trust and think on Christ, we will be able to go to lost people with the gospel and the prize of seeing them respond to the gospel truth and receive Jesus Christ as Savior gets a whole lot closer in our sight, in our soul, because we get to see ourselves being used of God. The fear of man, it is a snare. It'll bring a snare, absolutely. But there's an antidote for that. There's an answer. Whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. So when you and I go out to work, go out to the store, go mow the lawn, and we might see our neighbor, and we go with a mission that we're God's servant, and wherever we go, we are to take the gospel. Can that be a fearful thing to share the gospel? Yes, but we're going to trust in the Lord. We're going to think on him. We're going to ponder the prize, the reward of giving the gospel to a lost person. Their eternal soul might respond to the gospel the time that we give them the tract or verbally tell them about Christ. Friend, get the gospel tracts from us. My announcer is about ready to give our contact information. Let's you and I become partners in the heartbeat of God to reach lost souls. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.